Hey everyone, Chris, the Thrift Shop Hustler. We're going to go over the top 10 things we sold on eBay in the month of January 2019. These will be the big ticket items that we sold in the last month, the beginning of 2019. So stay tuned for the whole program as you might find something that you might have in your collection that is worth big dollars. So you definitely want to tune in for the whole show. And by the way, if you're not subscribed, click the subscribe button and uh, please click the like button if you enjoy uh, some of this programming that I've created before. Also, if you just want to say what's up, definitely click the like button below. That helps the algorithm and helps people to uh, find my channel, which sometimes gets a little crazy. I don't know why uh, some people can't find my channel when they're searching for it, but that's YouTube's algorithm. And uh, we're going to go over the top 10 things that sold in January on eBay. Uh, these were, like I said, the big ticket items. Uh, there's some We had some pretty good sales this month, so I'm very happy. Uh, hopefully, you know, we can go into that in February as, uh, you know, traditionally quarter one for internet sales, eBay sales, any kind of sales are usually slow. So the fact that we had record-breaking sales in our shop for... Um, January is a good start to the program here and also you know getting the eBay room set up and by the way if I can remember I'm going to put a link up here on the back end for the update of the eBay room we're currently uh, getting all the basic inventory bins and all that kind of stuff sort sorted and separated and I won't make another video till I get the standard set up and all the shelving and all that kind of stuff but uh, you can check out that video um, to see where we're at. And we got Benjamin Turner in the house. Hello, welcome to the chat. Wow, oil canvas for 2K. Well, we're going to get into that. We didn't quite get 2000 for it, though it is worth about 2000 And by the way, uh, for those that aren't into art, I, I su highly suggest, you know, a lot of people don't know about art. I highly suggest spending, you know, a couple hours a week researching art and starting to learn about it because like i've said before the the high price things that you're going to find at garage sales and thrift shops estate sales the, the i should say the big ticket item the thousands of dollar things is going to usually be art sure you can find a block of gold or something like that and it's worth a lot or uh the the original 200 copies of the declaration of independence is worth a million dollars three million dollars if it's in better condition <clears throat> but I guess that can be considered art in a little way because it's paper or whatever. Uh, but once again, I'm Chris, the Thrift Shop Hustler. I really appreciate everyone who is stopping by. Uh, let's get right into it as people will let some, some more people. And by the way, if you're watching this on the back end, we were doing this live. So um, I'm going to turn off my phone because I know it's going to start beeping the whole time I do this. It's kind of funny when I do a live show uh, is when everyone calls me. Or like someone wants something is so so let's uh, <laughs> I guess let's get right into it before that starts to happen here. <clears throat> so first up we have this large original New Mexico American artist Ed Sandoval uh, oil on canvas. This is painted. This is signed. This is actually a beautiful painting. Uh, as far as in terms of the colors were so vibrant. I remember uh, just looking at this photo and just being like the color the colors were just so amazing. And uh, I think uh, this was oil on masonite. And if you guys can look very closely, uh, you can actually see the masonite cross patterns here in uh, the the painting. So that's one of the things where without having to pop the thing open, as we can see, I'll show you the back, you know, without having to pop this thing. Oh, it's actually canvas. I'm now I'm I'm stupid. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, I thought this was a Masonite one. Oh, we have oh, we sold a Masonite one before. That's what it was. Uh, anyways, so this was uh, oil on canvas. Excuse me. And so um, this one we got in, and and this gentleman's paintings were actually selling for like four or five thousand dollars in galleries. So you know we we did a we did a high price on this, and uh, to try to see what we can get, and someone actually did send us a best offer for around twelve hundred dollars so we took it and this thing was shipped really well as a matter of fact i should have probably uh did um some 
we probably did we probably I probably should have made a video on how I ship artwork and I'll do that next time as a matter of fact I shipped the painting yesterday and I should have actually done the video then once we get the eBay room set up I'll go ahead and and do uh that kind of stuff for that uh Benjamin Turner is asking do you think we'll ever see digital Steam Monster cards on eBay? That is a possibility. I've thought about doing that before. Uh, there really isn't a huge market other than promo cards. If you go and search promo cards, or if you, if you just go push it, just go type in Steam Monsters in uh, eBay, you'll see some of the promo cards that are up there, and some of them have sold for pretty crazy money. Uh, so that was this painting. Art's definitely something that you should look in. It's kind of funny. I thought this thing was a Masonite board just from the close up of that because usually the backside of masonite masonite's smooth and then the backside usually has this kind of weird ripply thing anyways that was actually the best sale we did uh this month at twelve hundred dollars uh next up we have this vintage 14 karat yellow gold diamond round earrings uh, these were um brought into the shop and uh as a matter of fact i think these were these were something that was something that was brought into the shop a while ago and that was on on hold and uh, I'm very weak at women's jewelry or jewelry in general and women's clothing. So that's something that in 2019 I've been personally studying. Uh, one thing that I learned, which is a huge tip for everyone, if you see earrings that have these screw twist on things, they're usually will tell you that it's a real diamond or that the, the stone is very precious because someone does not want to lose uh, these diamonds so that's one of the things that I found out researching earrings that have these kind of uh, screw I don't even know what the proper terminology is it's like a, a, a bolt a screw and so uh, these I think what were the full carrot so yeah these were half a carrot each uh, we did use the diamond tester and by the way I highly suggest getting a diamond tester if you don't have one in your arsenal of tools they're really inexpensive i think they're under 20 dollars for like the really kind of basic ones they have really expensive diamond testers that will actually like shoot a laser into uh, the piece and things like that uh, but for this one you know it was one of the ones that we can use just a regular thing and when you look in when you look when i looked at it like a, a high powered loop i saw that there was flaws uh, inside the diamond and usually like a cubic zirconian will be perfect inside and if you know if finding flawless diamonds is pretty rare in itself so you know like you know it's kind of real when you see uh, all these elements here and this tested for 4k yellow gold on this one so actually we took a best offer for around five hundred dollars on this one and uh, let me just check something real quick here do, 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 do. yeah <laughs> for a second there i thought i was streaming on another channel that i have i have a few channels uh so i thought i was streaming on another channel for a second there but uh so yeah we took a best offer for five something on this one and as a matter of fact we had another set of earrings that were like i think maybe 0.25 total carats on another one and, and the gentleman actually bought those and so this was a really good sale we sold both those earrings and it, I should have actually put those in this set in this in this video, but we're just doing the top ten highest things sold uh, this month. Uh, speaking of artwork, we have this Dennis uh, Mahome, uh, American artist, sagebrush flowers. We've talked about this before. For those that watch my Instagram feed, and by the way, I think in my Instagram links below. I have no idea. Um, we talked about this painting before when it came in, and by the way, um, the whole photography studio setup has made taking photos of uh, of artwork way better than we did before. As a matter of fact, if we go back here real quick, and I apologize for going backwards here. Where is it? Um, I think I have, I think I cropped out the easel here. As we can see here, we have a really, really nice wooden easel. That's like a beautiful easel. And I've been using that. And this was actually before the photography studio, as you can see the shadows in the back. But what I'm saying is this easel, with the new lighting system here really makes the, the images pop and it's just photography for eBay is such a huge skill to have and something that everyone who's serious about eBay should upgrade their stuff. Uh, but anyways, back to the, the artist, this is an amazing painting. As you can see, this is called photorealism. It almost looks like a photo. Uh, I think this one was on, this one was uh, oil 
Did we see it was oil? Do, 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 do. I'm you know today I've been getting all my artwork confused. We've been selling a lot of artwork uh, the last couple of days. Uh, anyways, so uh, this is an amazing painting. As you can see, another pro tip for those that are like, what do I buy? If something looks like it's high quality, it's something you should probably pick up if the price is right. Usually high quality means good artist, not all the time. And also be aware of prints and things like that. Um, touch, feel, smell, all that kind of stuff goes into play when buying art. As a matter of fact, I should really consider uh, doing some of those uh, <clears throat> uh, videos on art or maybe I should just leave it up to you guys to, to do your own research and stuff like that you know it's not going to be something very easy to learn really off the bat there is few things that you can learn that can help you but it just takes li literally like years of experience of knowing what to look for and what to find and how to search it and all that kind of stuff oh man speaking of art this has been an art this has been an art month I'm telling you uh, these are really cool. This thing was super heavy. This is a 2000, the year 2000, and I'm going to probably butcher this name. I think it's Musk, Mox, Musk, Osk, Mux, Ox, <laughs> Greenland, Inuit, Soapstone Sculpture. Um, I highly suggest people to research uh, soap, Soapstone Sculptures uh, from, you know, like the what do you call it, like up north in Canada, I think they're, um, I forget what it is, but it, it's like, it's like almost like, uh, what, like we have here, uh, like Eskimos, Native Americans, but up north, and I apologize for not knowing the, the quite, uh, the name, uh, the Inuits, the Greenland up north, there is a lot of great art that is produced up north, there's some of the, the vintage ones of these soapstones, sculptures go for a lot of money and for those that don't know i don't even really know what soap uh, soap stone is all i know is it's super heavy this thing was probably 16 inches wide or 16 inches long i should say and it weighed like 25 pounds and we just shipped it yesterday and i should have made a video on how i shipped this thing because it was just like i'm sorry to toot my own horn but it was like a beautiful <laughs> shipping job uh that i there was so many tips i could have pulled making a video of how I ship this that probably everyone that's in the reseller community should know uh, how to ship something like this and something heavy like this that can potentially break and all the layers oh man I should have made a video of this anyways uh, this sold we took a best offer for 400 on this uh, it's probably <clears throat> I would say the, the insurance value on this one's probably about twelve hundred dollars and uh I, I listed it to for two thousand just to see where we were at because it was a kind of a newer one and just so um you know just so we know uh that the older ones are actually the ones that go for a lot of money and i've seen and if you watch antiques roadshow they've showed a couple of these soapstone sculptures that's like a tongue twister so everyone say it <laughs> soap soapstone sculpture oh yeah yeah man i'm, I'm like i only know one language i don't know i only know english and it, i even have a hard time uh uh, speaking with that so if you if you speak multiple languages good on you i can't even figure out i can't even speak really one language so <laughs> anyways this is something to research for if you guys are on the looking on this on the back end uh, you definitely want to uh, research inuit art <clears throat> soap sco soaps <laughs> forget it i'm done i'm done with this go look it up <laughs> uh, next up we have this rokenbach construction lot of vehicles uh, we talked about this in the past. I talked about this when we got this in on uh, Instagram. Um, I haven't been posting much on Instagram because it's just it's just like I like Instagram. It's just such a time waster for me personally, for my business, uh, for our business. It doesn't really, you know, other than, you know, maybe showing an auction or, or something like that. It really there's no monetary value for me to really post on Instagram, to be honest. So. Uh, I did post this thing on Instagram. It is Rokenbach construction lot of vehicles. I've never seen this brand before. So Rokenbach is something to put in the back of your mind and uh, definitely do that. We got uh, Anthony Bradley and Baba Tundi. I think that is in the chat. Uh, Anthony says, congrats. I haven't sold any art, just collecting and holding them. It's Shu Manchu from steam. Oh, we got steam. We got, it's funny. We got, it, it, 
I don't know where the reseller YouTube community is, but the, the Steam It community is showing up to my videos. That's too funny. Uh, and then uh, Baba Tundi says, please do a video on art and paintings. I probably should. Or I should may maybe not. Maybe I should just leave it up to you guys to, to do your own research and stuff like that. Uh, um, I, it's funny because I keep saying I'm going to do videos. I never do them. So maybe there's, I don't know. We'll see. Anyways, uh, definitely look up Roken. I think it's Roken Bach. I think that's how you pronounce it. They're actually really cool. If I was a kid, I would have loved these things. They're pretty much like a, a, a cross between Legos and, I, I, sorry for saying Legos, it's Lego. Uh, it's a cross between Lego and some kind of like Thomas the Train remote control. Everything's remote control. So you can, you know, move your little trains across the thing, use the crane with a remote control. And it's a modular system where you plug in these little kind of RF chips I want to say into the little figures and then you correspond those with the remote. So you can have this whole setup of this construction site using, they, they look like PlayStation um, 2 controllers, as we can see here. Uh, it's This is a really cool thing. But anyways, definitely look this up next time you see this <clears throat> or if you see it, if you come across it. Now, I, I don't think these are prevalent in the United States, though someone told me one time that they used to see these all the times in Toys R Us, and I don't know if it's the Mandela effect or whatever, but I've never I've been into reselling for over thirty years. I've never seen this brand before, and supposedly it's been out for years. So I don't know what kind of rock I was under, but uh, there is that. Uh, next up, speaking of art, I'm telling you, this month has been art crazy. We got Rock Newcomb, Polychrome, uh, Tonto American Arizona, Southwest Phoenix Arizona. Um, I, I think I, here's the thing I can't, when there's a, an artist that's not an American Indian, <clears throat> it's, you can't, eBay has really weird rules about putting Indian or indigenous or, or there's something like that when you, when you're selling art like this. And so just be warned, you know, you can't put Indian, you can't put, uh, or, or American Indian. And there's a lot of terminology unless it's an actual, uh, Native American that made the art. So there, like I said, art is crazy. Like when you get into the world of art, and I think that's why a lot of resellers just stick to clothes and hard goods. Is art is literally like a huge deep ocean of stuff to learn. But anyways, this is an amazing painting. Now this painting is so amazing that I thought it was a print until I actually put it under the microscope and then you could see the very fine brush strokes. And let me tell you, this artist, whoever this Rock Newcomb guy is, is amazing. Anyways, here's Masonite. So for those that were like, oh, you don't know Masonite in canvas. See the patterns on the back of Masonite? Sometimes on the smooth end, it actually transfers over to that. Um, so this is what I was talking about, those crazy cross patterns. Let me see if we can see if, could, if I did a close up, close up one of those. I see the cross patterns here. Some artists will actually paint on this backside. It's not too often, but sometimes they do. And there's a weird cross pattern, uh, kind of, uh, how the Masonite rolls through the, the machine when it's being produced, um, for that. But anyways, this is a great painting. Uh, like I said, it took me a while to do research on this cause I thought it was a print for the longest time. Till I actually got into looking at uh, the the subtle brush strokes, and you can actually see there's a little bit of like uh, I don't want to call it hazing or cracking, but like I said, this painting was super amazing. Anyways, we sold this. I did take a best offer for three hundred. Uh, the 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 price of fifteen ninety nine is very high. And let me just tell you guys another tip since you're here and you want to like learn about art, always price your stuff high if you can because you never know and the thing is if you price it too low you're screwed you know what if you sold a i don't know a five thousand dollar painting for five hundred dollars and you you'll never know because if you put it for five hundred dollars and it sells real quick well you know or if it doesn't sell real quick you don't know if you could have got more for it so i always say price high you can always bring the price back down if you price low you can never really bring the price back up if you if it sells so uh, that's another i guess uh pro tip for people that want to get into art 
But anyways, we have another one of these in the shop. And as a matter of fact, I'm probably going to drop the price today, this month for February on some of the art pieces that we that have been stagnant to see if we can move some of those. But this is an amazing painting. Whoever bought this uh, not only got a great deal, they got a really amazing painting by a really highly uh, detailed and professional artist. So awesome to that. Uh, next up, we have this uh, native. See, this, this one was... Uh, let me see. This one was... Uh, Yes, yeah, so this we talked about this one before in the past. I took a best offer for three hundred. This is also a vintage, uh, made native. Uh, I think this was what was this? Do, 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 do. Hand waving, hand woven, hand waving. I'm hand waving, everyone. Uh, this was amazing thing. This was actually found on the floor. Uh, for those that say that you work at a thrift shop, there's nothing found on the floor. Well, I walked out there one day, and I'm there all day long, so I walked out there and found this on the, the racks. And was like, oh, let's see if we can sell this on eBay. Sure enough, you know, I did put this for an like extremely crazy amount of money before and just kept dropping the price down. We did take a best offer for 300 on this. Uh, this was an amazing, amazing, amazing jacket. And it was, like, for being... I don't know if it was from the 60s or the 70s from this tag... And if those, if anyone knows by just looking at this tag, if you think it's from the 60s or the 70s, it could be from the 80s, to be honest. Uh, but the tag itself looks pretty old. Uh, the condition of this piece was absolutely mint condition. Uh, considering it's like a cream color that, you know, I swear white and cream always is a magnet for stains. This thing was beautiful and it literally screamed to me when I when I saw it on the on the <clears throat> pegs from like 20 feet away uh, so we did take a best offer for this so definitely uh, go and check stuff out like this uh, any kind of Native American jackets I've been really getting into uh, Native American art I got tons of books that I've been reading about this stuff turquoise silver um, squash bo blossoms for those that don't know or like if you find original squash blossoms they're like these beautiful necklaces silver necklaces they go for thousands of dollars and sometimes you come across um, some of the newer ones because in the 70s there was this huge uh, resurgence in native american art and silver working and turquoise like turquoise in the 70s was huge and uh, there is some turquoise that's very valuable just the stones themselves because of uh, the different mines that they were made from <clears throat> some of the the mines have closed down over the years so making the particular and i don't want to get into turquoise guys you guys would be cr you got <laughs> the world of turquoise is crazy you want to talk about like going deep into the ocean about knowledge go and research turquoise just just research turquoise uh, next up we have this authentic chanel jacket this is a tweed jacket blazer this was an <clears throat> actually uh this is an older photo as you can see here and as a matter of fact um this was actually the wrong auction we actually actually canceled this auction because it was missing a button on the sleeves and i didn't notice it till it was being shipped so we actually did take a best offer for i want to say like two something on this shirt on this jacket before when, when it was relist relisted and uh, the customer was very happy as you can see here yeah here's a perfect example and i can't zoom in because the photos were low quality there should have been a um a third button here and so we had to uh <clears throat> state that and also uh, it looks like there was some repairs done to these buttons so we had to to um disclose that because uh, one of the important things when you're selling clothing or selling really anything on ebay is try to describe any flaws you can uh it just i'm just telling you guys it's it's I, I swear some sellers just some of them just look for things to to you know uh write about and be like oh we want to return this because it's got a scuff you know what i mean like and then that's and that's totally understandable because you know if something's not disclosed to you when you're purchasing it in you know photos descriptions all that kind of stuff uh, please use those as the best of your abilities and uh, you'll have less likely to be uh, stuff returned. Oh, this was a cool one. Uh, next up, we have this uh, rare Tokyo Pop Rave Master. They were these books, uh, mangas, I guess you want to call them. And uh, we got a huge box of these in or a couple boxes of these in or, or mangas in general. 
And uh, I was looking up some of them, and I came across that some of them were selling for like sixty or seventy dollars each on Amazon. I thought this was crazy, and so I decided to actually put this whole lot together. This was the I guess this set was nice. Uh, and as a matter of fact, we had like maybe two hundred mangas that came in, and I I told them to put all the rest of them out for a dollar. Um, so someone came in and literally bought all the mangas. They were going for like maybe seven to twelve dollars on Amazon. So uh, whoever bought those, I'm not sure if they were a fan or a reseller, but they got a good deal because they could have easily made uh, two or three dollars each on those by sending them into FBA. So uh, good on you, whoever did that. And uh, you know, I'm glad that I priced them, for, you know, competitively for the resale shop uh, for someone that could definitely buy those. But anyways, this was a good find. Uh, we sold. I took a best offer for two hundred on this. This shipped uh, medium mail, and uh, this thing was super heavy. I think it was like twenty pounds or something ridiculous like this because these things were actually kind of thick. And so, uh, definitely look up for manga. For those who don't know, it they're basically like little comic book uh, paperbacks. Some of them go for good money. Most of them don't. Um, I always look these up when I find them because I've found ones that are worth over a hundred dollars many times at goodwill that no one seems to care about so it's one of those bolos to definitely look out for and uh let's see here and that was that uh next up uh we have this laurel piana baby cashmere pullover sweater i think we took our best offer for 200 on this and there were so many more high priced items i could have went through but we were only doing the top 10 this month uh, for, for those that don't know, I'm going to tell you real quick, look out for this tag, Laurel Piana, obviously buy any Laurel Piana you find, uh, especially if the price is right, but anything baby cashmere, um, I don't think <clears throat> you rarely see any of this stuff go under a hundred dollars that says baby cashmere for Laurel Piana. Um, just look at condition and all that stuff, but, uh, you know, I'm starting to get into women's clothes. <clears throat> As you can see, this was a the new mannequin, but the old photo, the old light system, because you can see the shadows here. Now the the photos are are, are a lot better, so um, we're seeing a lot more sales with clothes. Because I swear, just because we upgraded the photo situation in our business, we've seen an increase of sales by like 20 50 percent just by having better photos. So uh, if you're taking photos on on your couch or or whatever white background as best as your ability uh properly lit you know try to f try to do those 12 photos a lot of people say you don't have to and that's true you don't really have to at least at least do three or more photos do not do two or under uh that's i i highly 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 suggest it i've even heard some ebay person say that before that they prefer three or more photos i don't know if it has anything to do with the algorithm but ever since i heard that from someone i was like i'm just gonna put in three or more photos uh try to do as many as you can try to fill up the 12 if you can <clears throat> i usually do around six or eight you know but if it's something that's like highly detailed or a lot or something like that i, tr I try to stuff those photos for sure um anyways i uh, hope everyone enjoyed the show definitely click the like button subscribe uh leave a comment below let me know what your favorite uh item was that you saw and we will uh i will write you back and let you know what i thought about the item and if you guys have any questions definitely leave them in the comments below uh thank you for stopping by and we'll see you next time take care